Hi, Kathy here from Kathy's Cute Creations. Today I'm going to be making a block for the bookcase quilt that I want to make. It is going to be a six inch teapot. It's going to have three different colors. Let's get over here to the table and I'll show you. Three colors that I'm using is this real pretty flower right here. That's the teapot. This is a sort of a burgundy color. That's going to be the saucer. And of course, the white is my background. Here is the pieces already cut. If you want to write down the measurements, I will give them to you. Block A, and there's one of them. It is a one and a half by five and three fourths inch rectangle. B and C are also rectangles. Let me put them both in the picture there for you. So. B is one and a half by four and a half, and C is one and a half by one and seven eighths inch. D, E, F, and G are all squares. D is a one and a half inch square. E is a one and one fourth inch square, and it's two of them. Here, let's show you that there's two there for E. F is a one inch square and G is a two and a half inch square. H is a one by two and one eighth inch rectangle and all of those are the white which is the background of the cup so it's like the back of your uh, the back wall of the bookcase. I is a one by one and a half inch rectangle. J is a one by two and three quarters rectangle. K is a one and three seven eighths inch rectangle. L, which is the actual pot itself, that's the biggest piece, and that's four and a half by four and three fourths. And then M, which is this strip here, is one and a fourth by six and a half inches and that is the bottom of the saucer. And then all I did was I took my, I got a, this is a design board and it's white, but because I'm using all this white fabric, I just took a piece of pink uh, checkered flannel and put it over the top of it, it's just pinned on there. And then what I'll do is I'll just pick this up, put it next to my sewing machine, and then pick it up and make it as I go along. This way I don't have to move this again. Now, the way that I cut, and I'm going to show you here with these strips. So I got like this. I count it out on my table here. One, two, three, four, five, and three quarters. Put the ruler down and then cut it. I save all of this extra fabric. I mark it so I know what size it is because I already know that I'm going to use the white in other backgrounds of these squares that I'm, of these, um, excuse me, these blocks that I'm making. And I may want to go ahead and use these other colors, this burgundy and that. I might want to use it in another block. I don't know if I want to, but I'll have it if I want it. So I keep all of this stuff together so that if I want to pull it out and use it, maybe I want to put an applique with one of these things on it. You never know until you're totally finished with your blocks. Now, when it came to the large teapot size, although it says it's four and a half by four and three quarters, what I do is I think in my mind, there's not going to be too many blocks that are actually four and a half by four and three quarters. So how am I going to make the best use of my fabric? Well, I know that lots of things are five inches. So why don't I just cut a strip five inches? Then I can cut it down to four and a half by four and three quarters. Then I have a five inch strip, which is what this is. And I wrote five inches because if I ever want to make something with five inch blocks, then I have that already cut out. I just need to go ahead and cut them all out into five inches, however many I need to make my project. Okay, so this is what you're thinking about, is how you're going to use it beyond the project you're using now. Because you want to keep all these scraps. You never know when an idea might hit you, or you see something and you want to make a block out of it. Okay, we don't want to throw away a lot of fabric. We want to save it, because fabric is not cheap. Okay, so let me get over here to the sewing machine. We're going to start making this teacup, and then we'll have one more block made. All right, the first two pieces of fabric you need is I and F. I being the teapot color, F being the background, and you want to go ahead and mark your fabric diagonally. Let me show you. And let me 
to get some pins over here. Like this. And then we're going to sew it diagonally. There we go. You want to cut that off. And you're cutting a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to thumb press it, press it, and I'm going to use my little board here to, it's like finger pressing it. And there we go. And I did it to the dark side. I'll show you here like that and then we'll do the next one you need to take H and J and you're going to lay the wrong side of J across like this and we're going to mark it dying I've marked it on the white side here I'm going to go ahead and sew it to hold on to this fabric here so that it doesn't move. There we go. Just gonna cut it off. Just like we did the last one. up your seam, finger press it, all right, there's that one, now we're going to pull the second set that you did here, and you're going to be connecting K, which is another part of your teapot. This is K, and you want to line these up. I'm going to end up doing the same thing. I'm going to be on the back side because otherwise this may flip over on me. So let's see here. And I was pinning at both ends first. Pin it right here where that is so that that does not flip over on me. Let's see here. So it'll be pen pinned like that, three places. Open it up and then I would press towards the fabric with the flowers on it then it won't show up in the white Now this has two different sides on my finger presser. It has the long and then this is a short one in case you were wondering. So it works pretty good. All right. While it's in this position, which is the white on the left, you want to go ahead and you want to take the first piece that you did up here and then you're going to attach this. Well, the white is on the right hand side and you're attaching it. I don't feel like when you begin, you can have too many pins in anything. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but. Yeah, we go. Down and off the bump we go. All right, and that's the way that one looks. Okay, I'm ahead of myself. I, I just want to grab that A for some reason. All right, we're going to take our two E's and we're going to put them on each side of our M. Remember, M is the saucer. We're just going to stick this one aside. And so this is where you're going to need to mark them. You take them. Let me make sure I got the right side. You're going to lay it down on the edge here. 
and then you're going to mark it from this corner to this corner, from this corner to this corner. So go ahead and mark your fabric, pin it. All right, I got them both marked here. So what you're looking at when you go to mark these is you're marking from the top. This is this is your teapot bottom, from the top down to the right hand corner there, and from the top down to the left hand corner there. Alright, let's see if I can get this down that line there. Okay. over to the left. I can't have that, so let's pick out a couple of stitches. Just a couple, and then I'll Okay. Took out four stitches there, because I went over to the, to the wrong side. I would have my block skewed. So let's just Put this right back in where it previously went through. There we go. Move this a little bit better. Let's see. There we go. There you go. Okay. Now I think that's it. Cut this off here. Red. Cut the other side off. Open them up. And you're going to press to the dark side. Alrighty. Now that is the bottom of your teapot. Now what we need to do is, and and by the way, this here that we just did, that's the right hand side like this, in case you're wondering how we're building our block. Let's see if you can see all that. This is the right hand side and this is the bottom. And now what we want to build is, I'm going to move both of these over here. We want D and we want L. And we're going to put D, and we're going to put it down here in the bottom left-hand corner. And we're going to mark our fabric diagonally. We're going to take B, and we're going to put it on the top. I still have this marked now. I haven't done it yet. So B goes on top. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pin it. Make sure that your right sides are together. Whoops, I grabbed two pins by mistake. Alrighty. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sew this off of here. B. Move up a little bit here so I can grab the fabric. There we go. send off down here. Probably I'll just need my trash can over here. I don't like somebody's over there. And then we're going to press these to the dark side.
pretty ironic that my little uh, presser here <laughs> is pink and blue like the fabric on that. Let's stick it over there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to be attaching this to... Here is where we attach A. We attach it to our teapot. Right sides together. I might have to put three pins in just for this. the blue as you can see it's wavy right there which means it had more give so it gave so to feed that through that would be you need to put that on the bottom because your bottom is your feed dog which feeds the fabric through so if you have a little bitty curve like that which is a little bit stretched that'll feed it and if you do it on the top it will not feed it through the top just goes straight through I always hold mine up a little bit, which helps it. There we go. Okay. So let's go this way with that one, too. We're going to go to the dark side. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to iron these pieces before I continue all of them to put them together. Now you take your teapot bottle, a bottle, you take your teapot body, and you're going to put your handles to it. The way that you're connecting it is you're going to be matching up the top up here. You're going to match this seam with this seam. So let me show you here. Now it's not any kind of nesting going on, it's just, you know, I guess it could be nesting actually. It could be the can. Let's see. Now in our last video we learned how to do squaring up. So when you get done with this block, if it needs to be squared up, you'll know how to do it just in case because whenever you make something with all these little pieces like this somewhere along the line something's gonna be off so you wanna square it up I'll show you when I get done to see if I have to square up something and I'm putting a lot of pins in here just to be on the safe side this side here this is the right side of the fabric this is the wrong side I took this seam right here and I nestled it. Let me see if I can turn it up to that seam right there. Hopefully it will come out correctly. Let's just check. Let me go ahead and sew it. I do have a seam ripper handy in case it doesn't work. All right, my quarter inch here. I was totally off. Okay, I had to come back on because <laughs> now I know why it did not look right. <laughs> but I gotta show you my mistake because it is so funny. So it is correct, but <laughs> I put it on the wrong side. This is supposed to be on this side, and this and this is supposed to be on this side. So I gotta take both these sides out and put them back in. <laughs> I just think it's hilarious. So take a look at this so you can see what I've done. And then when I have it correct, you'll be able to see it. Oh my goodness, I was in just a fits of laughter for a second there. All right, we're going to attach A back to the left-hand side of the teapot. So when you're looking at your teapot, it should have three pieces on it. It should have your top, white, which is the background, the teapot itself, and then the letter D at the bottom. So we're going to attach this side to this side, which is the correct side this time. All right. 
Oops, I didn't get all my threads pulled out of there. There we go. Okay. Try this again. Okay, there we go. side and when the right side goes on it is going to look like it's off because the handle is down from the mug or the teacup excuse me so let me mash my corners back up I feel like I'm in a deja vu here way it should look now up to this point and then we're supposed to take the last block your letter G put on the right hand corner of your teacup you're gonna take your pen and you're gonna mark it from the top right to the bottom left you want to go ahead and sew it time I'm looking at it, I'm thinking that's gonna ruin this square <laughs> I had to lay it down and look at it and fold it over because I couldn't figure out why would you put that big piece of fabric on there I want to go ahead and cut that off and then when you pull that back you'll see the corner here Actually, that's going to have to go to the dark side, so. But you can see where the handle has a definition right there. And now we're going to put the bottom of the teapot on. Now, keep in mind you want the white to go down at the bottom. You don't want it to be the white at the top, okay? It goes like this. I'm going to put it on there just to show you. Like that there. get it pinned. Alright, so in the last shot you pro you probably thought that the bottom wouldn't fit because it looked like it was too small, but I had not pressed it yet. So I pressed it, I used that um, best press and it does fit and I have put a pin everywhere that there's a seam. There was one here, here, here. The reason for this is so that that stays down and doesn't get folded over as I go ahead and sew it. Alright, so this is the last piece to be putting on. There we go. Okay. Let's have to go to the dark side here. And that is the bottom of our teapot. Let me press that. All right, there's what it looks like. And it does look like it could use a little bit of squaring up, and I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. All right, here it is on the table, bottom. And what I'm doing is I'm taking this line here, which is the red line. Let me get a for you. This line right here, and then I'm going to put my ruler on that line, and then I'm going to cut this excess off here. So that little piece right there. 
And then I'm going to go here. And, the, and I don't have a solid line all the way down here, but I do have this line right here. So I'll go over and I'll estimate the line for the handle of the teapot. And I'll go across the bottom because we already know that the red line is straight. So I'm trying to get this line here. Let me get my pointer for you here. So I'm lining up the number four all the way along the bottom of the fabric here, which we did square first. Then I start my line up here and I go down with it. And I take off the excess, Let's stick that over there. which is right here. I go over as far to the right as I can get. Take that off. Okay. Now that's squared and this is squared. So let me go down here to the four and a half line. And I'm looking at this line right here where the teapot top is. So go in right there. And I just got a little bit to take off. Okay, right here. Turn it again. I'm going down to the four, over to the line, right there. Take that off. And that made our teapot squared. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put it on the wall so it'll be next to the jug and you'll have an idea of the two different sizes together. So that's what they look like side by side. They're not necessarily going to go right next to each other on the quilt itself, on the shelf. I mean, I may have the teacup on something else, but just to give you an idea of the different sizes, I want to make some things differently. So I'm going to think about the third block and then we'll take a look at it. But in the meantime, I hope you like if you're not subscribed to me yet, go ahead and push the subscribe button. Hit that little bell so you can get notices whenever I put out new videos. And we'll continue on this along with all the other things that I've got going. I hope you like it. You have a good day. Till next time. Bye-bye.